Hello and welcome back to another great video. Today we have string dupe. Reproduce the behavior of the function string dupe. Says to man it. All right, man string dupe. Make this a little bigger for us to see. And right down here in the description, the string dupe function allocates sufficient memory for a copy of the string S1, does the copy and re returns a pointer to it. The pointer may subsequently be used as an argument to the function free. But in this situation, we're not going to use that. Our function is just to replicate the, de replicate the behavior of string dupe. And in that function, we are not freeing because we want to just return the copied string. If insufficient memory is available, null is returned. What we also have in this is we are allowed to use malloc. So we have a different level of, we have not so much a different, we have a extra layer of complexity with this one. In this video, I'm not going to go into the details about what malloc does under the hood so much. If you want a link to that, click on this card dropout. The guy is excellent source of information. In order to use malloc in this situation, we need to know how long our string is. So we're gonna need a helper function of string length. But to save time, I'm just gonna copy that in here. Now that we have that out of the way, we can start with the meat and potatoes of this. So for string dupe, we obviously need to return a new string. So there's that. We should make sure here that this prototype is what they're asking for here. So this is exactly the same. The second thing we need is an iterator for the new string to keep track of its position when we're doing the actual copy. So we'll just say int i, i is equal to zero. Okay, now we're going to take care of creating the new string with malloc and also checking if sufficient memory has been allocated. If not new equals need to type cast it char malloc size of size of a char because that's what our string is it's a series of chars char times ft string length of source and then plus one for our null terminator and if that doesn't work we're going to return null okay so what this does is it first creates this variable new with this information. So all of this is being assigned to new. And then after that, it says, well, if not new, hence if new failed, then it's gonna return null, okay? Now we need a, a loop. So while, we're gonna say while source, and we're going to say new i plus plus, equals source plus plus. So that's just going to iterate both things at once and do the copying along the way. I'm gonna show you a nice tool afterwards. So once that's all done, of course, we need to take care of this little null terminator. So we're gonna say new i equals, if I could learn to type, that would be fantastic. New i equals a null terminator. And then once that's done, I'm just gonna return, return new. Fantastic. Now to test, I've already created this down here for us. What we're just gonna have is we're gonna pass it a string and mine is going to use our created string dupe and theirs is going to use the actual string dupe. In order to do that, you need to include string.h for the string dupe, for the C library string dupe but then stdlib is what you need to include for using malloc and for also using null. And then stdio, of course, you know, is just to do the print. So we'll save this and we'll compile it. Haha, <laughs> failed again. And this is ft string dupe. Okay, that worked. Now let's pass test. All right. Now you can see that I use colons on this side because when you do a test, of course it's easy to see if you've got white space in the beginning of your string because this will be shifted way over in here somewhere. But if you have, a, if you have something like this, it's really difficult to see if there was, for example, white space in the end. I'm not sure if this will work. 
This will work. A bunch of spaces. No, just takes them out. But in some sometimes you could have actually maybe this will work. We do test. Yeah, that's exactly why. Because see all this dead space here. If I were to take out these colons, I'll just do it for mine and save it. Recompile, let's clear it up. And now let's do this. See, you can't tell where, you can highlight all of this, but you don't actually know where this string ended and you don't know what's being compared. If I took the colon off of this one, you'd have no idea what's being compared. So whenever I do string comparisons like this, when I'm testing a new function, I have something like this so I can see specifically where the string starts and where it ends. Now I'm going to show you a tool. Well, this is this one's done now. This is string dupe all nice and tidied up, done, taken care of. So what you would do is reproduce the behavior of the function string dupe. Now this one, you actually have to include ft string length because you need some way of counting how long your string is. So part of the submission on this one, you do need to include this. Just remember to clean it all up, get rid of your main, take out take out the string.h and the stdio, and then of course I've got this extra stuff here which you probably won't have. But now let's go to that little, and I'll include this in the description below. This is the same function with one exception. I'm just using the actual string length one to save time and space. But what this program does is it will show you every step of the way how things are visually structured. So if we were to start this, this is showing us the steps. Now, as a caveat, I must say that you can't obviously use this during an exam because you don't have access to the web, but this is a fantastic tool for outside projects, but you can't have it too big. There's a limit on the compile time, and if it goes over that, it won't compute, and so you're stuck with it not working for larger scale programs. So for small snippets it works, but big stuff don't count on it. So you'll see that in the beginning, we've got these three variables and they're all allocated on the stack right here. And then it just goes through and it says, all right, it's for source, I had hello, and it created the hello with the null terminator. And then it created these with null. And now we're gonna go in and create mine from string dupe. And this is really cool. It goes through every step of the way. So now it'll allocate something new on the stack and it'll start pointing to stuff. For example, the source is now pointing to hello because that's what we have. We've passed in hello to here. It'll start creating the counter and it'll allocate, allocate fresh space to the new array for this section here. And now here it's just going through. You can see everything and I should mention that this arrow changing steps only happens when you're using pointer notation like this. If you were to use this new I++, you're going to see that this arrow doesn't change, but in fact the chars do. So every time you iterate through it, you see the I change and you'd have to manually check where we're at with that, but the arrow doesn't change with respect to it. So you just keep going through like so, and it gets to the end and then it plops in the null, returns it, and at the end, now it's just gonna do a string dupe like that, and then it shows the hello like this. And you can see that mine now is no longer null. Remember this in the beginning was null, now it's pointing to this, which is cool, and theirs was also null in the beginning, but now it's pointing to this. And you can see that these are exactly the same. So this tool is fantastic for testing purposes. If you have a complex, smaller algorithm that you want, it is failing somewhere and you want to see where it's failing and why. This is perfect for that. But that's all she wrote for FT String Dupe. Hope you learned something. If you like the content of the video, consider subscribing, smash that like button, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.